This is Susan Wheelbanks with BlendedInsight.com. I am a holistic and integrative healing arts practitioner, an intuitive, and an energy healer. In this podcast, I share tips, tools, and suggestions that have helped me along my path in hopes of inspiring and helping you along yours. Let's get started with today's podcast topic. Hello, Bright Soul. Thank you so much for joining me on another podcast. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for showing up. Thank you to all of you who have taken the time to join my High Vibe Lightworker tribe over on Patreon who have left me reviews. Continue to send me kind feedback. I appreciate you so very much. And we're entering into spring here in the United States, and I am so grateful for that. My goodness. I love spring. I love this time of year. And we've had a couple of days where it's been spring like in the winter, which just gives me enough to know that the end of winter is near and everything will start blooming. And because of that, I've been clutter clearing and just getting ready for bringing new things in. And I wanted to talk today about the consciousness shift that you and I continually make. And it comes in layers. When you first started on this journey, you could probably look back and look at where you are and what you learned and what you were able to absorb and where you are now. And my guess is it would be a lot different. And we can't go back. All change requires discomfort. We don't change when we're comfortable. We change when things are so uncomfortable that we decide we've got to move through something. And our soul came here to experience challenges. This is how we change. This is how we grow. And when you're on this consciousness journey, I call it a journey because when you think you have something figured out, surprise, another layer is unveiled and you realize, ooh, maybe I didn't have all that figured out or wait a minute, there's levels of truth. And that's one of the things we learn in pranic healing is there's levels of truth. So if I say I live in Colorado, that's one level of truth. If I say I live in the United States, that's another level of truth. If I say I live in North America, that's another level of truth. If I go down to the macro level and say I live in Denver, that's another level of truth. They're all true, but they're different levels of truth. And as you're unpacking on this spiritual journey, you'll begin to see that there's layers and there's levels. And it's fed to you in a way that you can receive because if you just received these deep truths before your body can hold it, before your mind can process it, before your soul can actually expand into the body and give you that experience to where you can actually walk through it and absorb it and assimilate it and integrate it, then you could fry yourself. (laughs) And I know because I've talked about that in a previous podcast about how I went too, too high too soon and I cracked my webbings and had to spend years repairing. And so what I wanted to say is the piece that we, you and I talk about a lot and something I've really been feeling more and more these days is dealing with people who are at a level that you used to be, but you're not there anymore can be so painful because if we just develop and become more conscious in a bubble, it really isn't doing anybody any good. I listen to all these preppers and I've got a couple of my friends that are like, I'm going to buy land and live away from the entire world and raise my kids out there and just isolate. And I think to myself, those poor kids, because when they have to actually integrate back into society, they're going to be so shook up. They're not going to have the skills. They won't have the experience. And you're not helping anyone by doing that at all, because now you can't influence anyone. What's the purpose of a big chakra in this big aura if you just isolate and go live in the land? Jesus went down to the people. When Jesus incarnated, he was with the people. Why? Because that's how you influence the world. Now, the the rub is we need to keep ourselves clean and give from our overflow. So do your practices and then go out and then listen to your soul, your intuition about when it's time to section off, replenish and listening to your higher self with your boundaries and all those things. So I would say over the past two years, I have expanded my consciousness exponentially, especially since I got on the Arhatic yoga path. And because of that, people show me who they are so quickly. It is more than ever before. They can't help it. And I have compassion for that because I understand that my aura is big. I understand my purpose. I know my path in life. And I give people 
a lot of compassion and forgiveness. So what I mean by that is within maybe three text exchanges, someone will have said something dirty, something sexual, something inappropriate. It happens so quickly that it's shocking. It absolutely blows my mind. And in everyday passing, just passing, people will throw up their stuff on me. They'll say something inappropriate. They'll make a dirty comment about my body. And I know that I'm just knocking the demons off. I know that because of who I am, the light that I carry. And I also believe it's my guides showing me that that's not your tribe. That's It's not shunning you, but that's not your people. So stay the course and continue forward until you find your people. Also, Part of my purpose is to show people who are in a place that I used to be in that there is a way out and there is a way through and you can live a different life if you choose to. But the way I show them is not through sending them things that they're not ready to hear that they don't want to or by saying things to them that they're not ready to hear or by pushing it because that's the part where we get frustrated. You see someone struggling and you see that they're living in a way that's not feeding, helping, they're unhappy. And us as former codependents and as empathic people and as kind people and healers, we want to save and rescue. This is the boundary that we talk about a lot that I learned the hard way that I can't change someone else. And it isn't my job to change someone else. My job is to focus on my own path and my own consciousness. And those that resonate and that are drawn to it will naturally be drawn in and I can give them the seeds and occasionally water it, but only to the degree that they're ready and willing. So my job is to vibrate and shine and be me. And when someone asks or when someone is drawn, I share in very small doses. And if they want more, I'm happy to share more. And that's, that's the the point on the path where people blow it because <laughs> if you push it on people, they re- they're repelled because for one, it has to be done in segments. So a lot of times people have to hit rock bottom where they can't handle anymore in order for them to make a change. That's for a lot of people. It has to hurt so badly that they're actually willing to do something else. And the other piece of this is sometimes we have to get a little bit extreme to override the old patterns in order to make a change. So for example, let's just say you want to lose weight. A lot of times what people will have to do until they develop these muscles and the discipline and create new neuro pathways in their mind, they have to get rid of everything in the house that is not in alignment with this new lifestyle in order to remove the temptation. And the same is true for spirituality. That's why a lot of us dove deeply into spirituality and went really extreme because we're trying to break patterns and we immerse ourselves in it so that we can create new energy thought forms and new neural pathways. So I'm just aware of where people are and what they're willing to do, but I know it's not my job. So the way that I deal with this, because I know it's hard, like I don't enjoy being around people that are drinking and drugging at all. And it's gotten more prevalent over the past three years where the world blew up and people, instead of getting better like you and I, they got worse. And it's not a judgment. It's just not in alignment where I am because I got way brighter. And if they got way darker, now there's not much alignment for us to meet in the middle. So because of that, I can sit with someone maybe when they're having like one drink, but when they start going over, I know that's my invitation to leave for many reasons. One, I know that they're pulling more negative energy to their, into their aura. I, can, I watch it. I watch them contaminate themselves. Two, I'm an energy healer and I don't want to have to battle those principalities and those darknesses and those spirits. And I, when I start to get slimed, it's time for me to go. So I've noticed how to just set my own boundaries and then have compassion where people are. And I don't want people to feel like I'm this high and mighty judgmental thing. I want to radiate compassion and acceptance And more than anything, illuminate a path to show you, hey, I understand where you're at. I was there at one point. I've had a similar background. I've had similar traumas. And there's another way. And there's all of these tools available to you. And if I can do it, you can do it. And I know that it's not comfortable. The other piece is, and you and I talk about this a lot, is once you know, you can't pretend you don't know. And it sucks. It sucks. It really, really sucks <laughs> because I know now that I'm being tested. You know, the teacher already gave me a higher curriculum. 
So the teacher knows that I know better. So when you're in kindergarten, you get to make these mistakes and you think it's cute and they forgive you. But when you're in a PhD program, you don't get to make those mistakes anymore. So I can't pretend now that I don't know because the beings know that I know. My soul knows that I know. And so I can't turn around. I got to keep walking. It would be so easy if what was fun for me is to go to happy hour and suck down a bunch of margaritas and blame my behavior on alcohol And repeat relational trauma and say, well, you know, that's what my mom did. So that's what I'm doing. And whoops, sorry, haha, take me or leave me. (laughs) That's what most people do. Or, you know, uh, sit around and just go to football games and scream like a lunatic with people that I don't even know at teams that I don't know anybody that's playing and guzzle down beer and eat four hot dogs and go home and not lift weights. (laughs) All the things that regular people tell me they enjoy. And when they're telling me these things, I I listen to them and I think, I would rather hang myself (laughs) than do those things. That sounds like the most miserable existence. I can't do it. I cannot do it. I wish I could. If I could, I would have so many options available to me. But the problem is, I can't do it. I know better. And so when you know better, you're expected to do better. And honestly, if you tried to shrink back down into that confined box, you would be busting out of it. And you and I both know it. And I'm not judging people where they're at. I want to say that if you do all those things and you love it, perfect. And it's because something on your path is aligned with that. It's just mine's not. So for me, what do I enjoy doing? I enjoy podcasts, audiobooks, meditation, breath work, health and fitness, lifting weights, pushing my body, challenging myself. I'm very intellectual. I like to think. I love nature walks. I love water. I love the ocean. I love the pool. I love hot springs. I like to sit outside in solitude in nature. I love animals. I'm a weirdo compared to the rest of the world. I'm a weirdo. I'll spend my weekend... In an energy healing seminar, I'll spend my weekend purging and challenging my shadow and all this deep work because my purpose is to break patterns and to shift. And we all have different purposes. So what I wanted to say is I know it's uncomfortable, especially when you don't fit in the world. You just don't fit in the world. And we weren't meant to. We came here to do something different. So, you know, when you're in the mass consciousness, you know, like I think about in my 20s when I used to go out and drink and it was so fun. It was so fun to go out drinking and blame things on alcohol and take no accountability for my life. But that time has come and gone. So you are exactly where you are supposed to be. Your soul chose this for a reason. You're doing amazing. I know it's uncomfortable, but this is how we grow. And you are not just growing for yourself. Your growth actually domino effects to those around you because your aura gets bigger and those who are drawn to you and who are of a similar tribe will find you they will totally find you and this is the only way that we can do is to go through you got to go through it and I'm I'm going through it with you I get it I know it's uncomfortable but it would be just as uncomfortable to to try to turn around and go back which you can't do and that is all I wanted to offer let's go into a healing
Jane Kay, and so it is. Friends, as always, I want to thank you so much for being here. If you want to join my High Vibe Lightworker Tribe on Patreon, the link is in the show notes. And as always, I wish you a beautiful week. Take care. Bye-bye.